Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Is it just me, or has TV gotten really damn good these days? And you know what? If you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that you do, because, quite frankly, you're listening right now. Uh, and if you are, hit subscribe. Hit that pound button, you know, hit mash that pound button, or like button, or whatever it is, and give us a little five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. We're available pretty much everywhere, places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, and plus we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seats YouTube channel. So if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Letterbox, the TikTok, and probably a few other places that I can't think of right now, uh, at In The Seats, for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for our latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because guess what? If we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please do us that kindness and please pay us a visit. Okay, on this episode, well, it's a little bit of a catch-up, but it's a fun one still. We're talking about Special Ops Lioness, the uh, fantastic new show out of the Taylor Sheridan universe, as it were, uh, which is uh, available on Blu-ray now and DVD, for those of you who want to go pick that up. I'm sure you can go watch it in various other places, too. But uh, it's a fantastic show, like I said, from uh, creator Taylor Sheridan. And uh, it's a, uh, well, it's a good story. It's a story of a CIA operative named Joe who, who uh, tries to balance her personal and professional life uh, as the tip of the spear in the agency's war on terror. Uh, she enlists Cruz, a female operations marine, as an undercover member of the Lioness program, which is tasked to, like I said, be the tip of the spear and bring down uh, some pretty bad people. It is a very strong female-driven show, starring the one and only Zoe Saldana, uh, Marisa de Oliveira, Michael Kelly, Morgan Freeman... Nicole Kidman, and it's just, it's loaded. And like I said, it's a Taylor Sheridan show, so there's going to be action, there's great dialogue. It is well worth putting on your shelf if you want to go pick it up on Blu-ray uh, right now. But uh, in one of many interviews we have, like I said, we did these a little while ago. And, uh, you know, because of our own personal situation, we we're playing a little bit to catch up. But it uh, doesn't mean that it's not a good interview. We had a great talk with the one and only Jill Wagner, who stars in the show as Bobby, but also serves as an executive producer on the show. We talked a little bit about the show's origins, working on it all, working with Zoe and uh, Taylor, and just sort of existing in the uh, in, in in the shared universe. I, I think I'm just making that up as we go along, but I mean, uh, these Taylor Sheridan shows are really be you know starting to take on a life of their own, and and this is another fantastic one, which God willing will get picked up for season two because I think it really is one of the better shows out there right now but uh like i said watch special ops lioness like i said uh, if you're a fan of any of these people pick it up, up on blu-ray it is definitely worthwhile but first enjoy our talk with the one and only jill wagner because between you and me it's a darn good one all right well jill obviously first off i mean just thank you so much for the time today i really appreciate this yeah no thank you now, I mean, congrats on the show. I mean, it's it's such a fantastic piece. But, I mean, I'm curious. Like, did you ask your agent one day, like, I need to find whatever the opposite of a Christmas movie is? And let me read for that. <laughs> um, so here's a funny thing about it is um, I actually, the, the the premise of this show actually started with me. And oh, my okay. Started here in Tennessee, I live on a farm, and my husband is in the Army. And... Um, I was actually complaining, I guess, one night. We were actually in the backyard having um, uh, some whiskey. And and like I said, there was a bonfire. And I was complaining about, you know, I was like, God, oh, you know, I just really want a role that I can just, you know, sink my claws into and really, you know, challenge me as an actor. And it's not that I don't love the family-friendly stuff, because I actually really do. Yeah. And I think it's important uh, for for that to be out there. But I wanted something to make my dad kind of, you know, just really proud. And since he was in the military, so 
that was my dream. I always wanted to play someone in the military. And my husband was like, well, why don't you create something? And I said, like, how am I going to do that? He's like, well, we got all night. Just ask me some questions. I'm, you know, your husband's in the military. I'm like, okay. So we started talking, we talked until the sun rose um, about the women that he had worked with in the military and he's in military intelligence. So it was a different kind of, of a female that he was working with. And it was just interesting. And to know, um, he told me about the lioness uh, group of women called lionesses. And I was like, are you lying? And then I started to, you know, listen to all these different stories that he had and how they got started and kind of what they had turned into. And then I just, I was like, this is a, this is special. And this is how God works. Like Taylor had been my acting coach in my early twenties. And so I had a connection to getting to him. And I was like, this is only a project that Taylor Sheridan could write because I didn't want it to be kind of sensationalized with women with guns and like, kind of, right. yeah. you know, taken advantage of and, and made it really cheesy or whatever. So I knew that I trusted his, his words and I trusted his vision. And, uh, and so I brought it to him and the rest is history. Like he, he was like, yeah, I'd love to write it. And he has created a masterpiece in my mind. I'm very, very happy with what he's done and I'm honored to be a part of it. No, I mean, I think we're 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 really getting into Taylor's secrets. Like, you're not the first person to tell me that you know he was their acting coach, and then all of a sudden the show came out of this. It feels like <laughs> we found we've cracked the Taylor Sheridan sort of mold of creating all these hits. Unfortunately, he doesn't do acting lessons anymore. So if that was an end for anybody, <laughs> I don't think he's going to have time. I mean, talk to me a little bit about just, I mean, obviously Taylor put this all together and there's this part for you, but I mean, you're there with Zoe, you're there with Nicole. And I mean, it, it, this is really something that seems to me that is, it, it's almost, it's celebrating sort of women in combat and women in the military. It's not something like you say, it's not, you know, girls with guns kind of thing. It's very much sort of understanding uh, the role that women play, especially in something like military intelligence. Yeah. I mean, well, it goes back to what my husband told me in the beginning when we were having that fireside chat. He said, you know, we would go into these villages and we would be interrogating these people, asking questions and this and that. And, and he was like, I would walk out with nothing on my notepad. And then my female counterpart would walk out and and she's like, oh, wow. Like, look at all I got. She got like three pages of notes and the things that they they recognized and that maybe that, you know, that a, a man didn't recognize, we think differently. Um, so I think it's really important that, and, and what Taylor has done so beautifully is really celebrate the intelligence of a woman. Now we're not going in there and saying that, oh, men, women are beating up guys and we're just better physically. And I mean, yes, of course, Cruz, we wanted to show that she was strong and that she was above average for a female. You know, um, but I think that intelligence wise, there's just there's there's something that's so beautiful about the way that he's written this. And all of these females are a really, really uh, intelligent, strong uh, female protagonist. I mean, they're I, every character I fall in love with every single character. And um, and so I'm just you know, I'm like, again, I'm, I'm very lucky that it's Taylor's words that we get to say. Well, and I mean, I love your character, too. It does feel like quietly. I mean, as strong as Cruz is, as strong as Joe is, it feels like quietly Bobby's the one who gets shit done. Well, um, it's interesting because, because uh, you know, Taylor said he was like, I'm going to write you a role that's going to be totally opposite from what you've been used to doing. And I, I had no idea what, you know, I was like, okay, like whatever. And then when I read Bobby, I was like, whoa. <laughs> And and actually kind of confused on how to play her, to be honest with you. I, I called Taylor on many occasions and was like, because I'm so used to wearing my heart on my sleeve when I act in, yeah. in all of the other kinds of movies that I've done. It's like, it's easy for me because I, I as Jill, am, am very, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I, I, you know, honest and open with my feelings <laughs> with everyone. So Bobby is way more um, compact and closed and guarded. And I'm still trying to find her vulnerability 
And because it's, it's interesting because when you don't have a ton, I'm used to, you know, being in every scene and this right. and that. So when you don't have that, it makes it really, really hard to kind of say, who am I in this scene, mm. you know, and not just say the lines. Um, but then Taylor gave me another piece of brilliant acting oh. advice. Still my acting coach. He was like, just say the lines because you are her, which I'm like, no, I'm not. And he's like, yes, you are. You are her. You can just, just say the lines, like just be, you know what I mean? Stop thinking about, okay, but after this, do I want to do that? Like, he's just like, just be. And it's so interesting when I don't know, it's like, I know that, but then when he tells me, I'm like, oh, okay, of course. <laughs> um, but it was hard. I mean, Bobby's a really, she's a complex one because there's not a lot that's known about her. But I think for sure she is loyal. She's calm. She values respect. Um, she likes to play with the boys. Um, I think if we get a season two, you might find out something about her that that is that Taylor and I discussed earlier on that would be kind of interesting for people, but, um, and for me, to be honest with you. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I think she's a bit of an adrenaline junkie too. So in a way, this is the only job she ever would want and that she could do is because she needs that fix. She needs that, you know, cause she believes in her mission yeah. so much that when she gets to go do it, that's like a release for her. Cause otherwise yeah. I think Bobby would be in a lot of bar fights and she'd probably be in jail. <laughs> this character though, I mean, it's gotta be sort of an interesting thing to sort of wrap your head around because I mean, like you said, I mean, it's not every day that you have someone like Taylor write something for you. And I mean, I can imagine like, you're, you're like, how do I play that? What's their intent? It's like, no, 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 just go do it. Shut up and do it. Yeah. It, However it, you it, do it is right. I mean, I was, I was fixated on like how I said one word because, because that word had two separate meanings. And I was like, like on set, like texting him, like, I don't understand. Like, is, is it this way or is it this way? And he goes, it's both. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like, how do I play this? how do I play this both ways and walk the line? And, and then it's like, just forget about it. Just say it. You know what I mean? And then something brilliant that Zoe does really, really well is she just does it differently each time. You know, I watch her and it's my whole experience in this show has been like a master class in acting and to watch Zoe on the other side of the camera, all right? It's like such a gift to me to get to sit at the monitors as EP and watch her navigate the scene differently each single time. And the only thing I'm worried about is I'm like, oh my God, now I'm even more confused on which scene that they should use because they're all so brilliant. You know, and as an actor, you forget like you have the freedom. This is not theater. Um, you know, as, as, and when you're doing movies and film, this is not theater, you get to like, you can, you can change your mind and do it a different way. And like, and I feel like sometimes we get in our own heads and we're like, no, this is who I, this is who this character is. Whereas it, sometimes if you play something totally different, you might find a really interesting bit in there. Um, so I think it's just, you know, for me, it, it, it is a reminder that just relax and play, you know, just play. I watch the greats and they just, they just play and they just do it. And it's so like effortless and beautiful. And so everything that I love about acting is on the show. How do you think this, this, this project has, has helped you grow as a performer? Cause I mean, like you said, the, the family friendly stuff is great, but at the same time, there's one gear. It feels like in a show like this, it's like you're getting a lot more rope to play. Oh gosh. I mean, this has been, you know, I told my husband, I said, if like I can die fully fulfilled with my career now that I've gotten to, to be in, in the room with these great actors, great directors, great DP, like everybody, everybody that is walking on that set is like the best of the best. I mean, even the catering, <laughs> you know, it's just like, you get to watch and be in the room. And sometimes I'm just like, it's just a, a, a gift to just be a fly on the wall and just watch their process and to learn from them and to watch it in real life is the gift for me. And it's also like, I kind of feel like, well, 
I have to pat myself on the back every once in a while because I'm like, you know, you could have given in. You could have said, you know what, I'm 40. No one is going to want me for any kind of role like this. So I'm just going to, I'm going to be satisfied. I'm going to give in. And and this is just how it is. This, the, this chapter is already written. But I, because of how I was raised by a Marine, by my father, who is like, no, no, you don't accept that. You, if, if you think greatness is on the other side of the pond, you swim. And so because of that drive in which he has taught me, because he was a Marine and because he was in the military, it it got me across the pond. It got me to Lioness. And, and now I'm forever grateful. But it also can never be taken away from me. And it's something that I will tell my children. I have two little girls I am a living example of what I want them to be. And I'm not boasting and saying I'm perfect. I'm saying when it comes to um, getting, you know, pushed down and, and getting multiple people telling you, you are not what you want to be. You just, sometimes you have to put your earmuffs on. You got to put your blinders on and you just got to ignore everybody and you got to do you. And that is exactly what I'll tell them. And sometimes it, it requires you cutting off all your beautiful hair, then you cut off your beautiful hair, <laughs> you know? It's a, it's just, it's so freeing. And it's such a great um, way to be as a human being. And I really want to teach them that you don't let others dictate your happiness. You just don't do it. No, I mean, I'm curious, how has feedback been from like your husband, family, who, people who have served? Because it really does feel like the show isn't trying to go rah rah and it isn't trying to be negative it's just kind of is yeah and it's just getting a very sort of genuine depiction yeah it's it's interesting to me because um you know our show is not this it's not this um we aren't playing superheroes right right we, yeah. we're playing like real people everyone on there male or female we're playing real people who have vulnerabilities and who have to go home to their families and who have their weaknesses. And so I hope, I mean, from the feedback that I've been getting from, from people in the military, it's been very positive. Um, and that is, to be honest with you, that is when I've won because this in an, in, in an essence is, is my love letter to the military because this is the only way. And of course we do, like my husband and I, we support like Special Operations Warrior Foundation and the military in general. You can do all those things, but in your kind of what you do best, how do you somehow conjure up something that says thank you to these people? And since I'm in entertainment, this was the only way that I knew how. And I hope that the, that the men and women who watch this show are are proud to be in the military. I hope we're we're shining a light on them in a positive way because I certainly that's all I ever want to do. For sure. Now, I mean, just final question, just to put a bow on this, I got to ask, what's more daunting, a Taylor Sheridan set or a Hallmark Entertainment movie set? Because they're both machines in like these massive conglomerates in and of their own. You know, it, it's interesting. I don't think anybody understands about like a, um, like when I'm doing the family friendly movies, we shoot those in 14 to 15. That's days. right. Yeah. So I don't think people understand that. Like, whereas we get, you know, weeks to film an episode, like, like months really to film Lioness and we have all this time and it's like, oh, we're shooting like four pages a day. Whereas on like, you know, a family friendly movie, it's like you're shooting like 10, 11 pages a day. It is not, it's a different gear and you got to roll. Sometimes you get one take and, and yeah. we're rolling. You know what I mean? Um, they are, they are both, um, they're both challenging in their own ways, but they both are like so fulfilling to me in, in their own ways because the people, it is the people on both sets that have been incredible like just incredible, you know, I'm just like, everybody is so, you ha you can learn from everybody on there. And I've, I've really, really, the guys on my team, the quick reaction force, there was an instant chemistry between us. And I was just like, oh no, we're going to get in a lot of trouble together. <laughs> Probably going to end up in jail boys in some small town uh, in some weird country. <laughs> So. Well, he, he, well, I, well, just hearing that makes me look forward to season two. But I mean, honestly, 
thank you again for the work and just thank you for so much for the time today. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good day. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental or purchasing needs this summer as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs. <laughs>